I'm in Berlin. I'm here for Bosch Connected World 2019. And I have the pleasure of being joined by Mike Mansoetti, who's the president of Bosch North America. Mike, great to see you. Great to see you too. Thanks so much for making time to catch up with me. Thank you. Now, you've had an amazing event uh, yep. this uh, week here in Berlin, uh, May uh, uh, 15th and 16th, uh, 2019. Uh, the topic of IoT has been the underpinning theme uh, and connected all things. Uh, maybe just a, a bit of a, a roundup of kind of what's your general sense of the event so far in the last couple of days? What's uh, really jumped out at you uh, with the last couple of days of this event? Yeah, the last couple of days have been amazing here in Berlin at Bosch Connected World, and this is our sixth Connected World that we've done. Mm. So coming from a small, in a small hotel with 400 people, now over 4,000 people coming together to talk about the IoT and connectivity, it's just been really exciting. Some of the great things continue to be the partnerships that we have and all the people that are here together with us. So it's not right. just a Bosch event, but it's a lot. Of, it's a chance to bring together our partners and our co-collaborators and the things that we're we're doing, and also show off all the many use cases that are now developing in the IoT. It's pretty exciting. Well, firstly, it's a testament to yourself and the the team who are leading this event uh, and the global team that this thing has literally, I think the phrase was, doubled year on year from the Certainly. initial group of 400, as the CEO said yesterday, in uh, your CEO said in the uh, opening keynote, to what is now, I'm assuming, something in the order of five or six or seven thousand people. And so much so that you've had to break it out into three <laughs> halls, one for the uh, hackathon event separately, one for yeah. the expo, and one for the, the other keynotes and so forth. So underpinning all this, Internet of Things, it's a massive transformative uh, technology. Um, where do you see the biggest innovations taking place currently? I mean, you've got uh, connected mobility, cars, planes, trains, and automotive, et cetera. Automotive being a big one in North America. Mm -hmm. uh, connected agriculture, connected manufacturing, and some of the ancillary parts like uh, Industry 4.0 and the future of work. Uh, let's maybe just talk about connected mobility for, for the start. So what, what are the big topics that we should be thinking about here that have come out of this week? Yeah, certainly mobility is a big topic for us in North America. It's something that we've been working on. Automotive is about 65% of our business in, in North America, and this topic of mobility, you know, creating right. mobility, not just about automotive, you know, but about yeah. really mobility and how we get from A to B. Uh, the exciting thing is the number of service thing, services that are coming up. So we had a chance to talk about some of this here at Bosch Connected World, and we were really happy this year that we were able to bring one of our partners, Mojo, and right. they're helping to connect those that are unconnected, if you will. So creating a platform, working with, uh, the, the carriers to really bring that connectivity inside the car. Yeah. And the exciting thing about Bosch Connected World is we get to come together with our partners because we realized early on none of these solutions can be done alone. So we really need yeah. these partners and these people that we're collaborating with to bring this expertise in. And Kinney and Mojo is, just has that expertise really on the platform side and the connectivity side. Uh, and we bring that domain knowledge and that domain right. experience. For example, all our years of diagnostics uh, our sensor technology and crash detection. It enables to unlock all this potential uh, for the folks out there on the road today. It's exciting. It is an exciting time. A couple that really jumped out at me was, uh, uh, other than wanting to take one of the uh, E-Coupe uh, bikes and, and, <laughs> yeah, no, and that would have been cool. drive that home. That was pretty cool. <laughs> but I, I really loved uh, two things in particular. The, the wrong way driver alert system where if someone was going down a, a, an exit, thinking it was an entrance into a freeway and mm -hmm. I know there was an example where someone referenced, and I forget the name of the person, that at least two lives had been uh, uh, noted of having been saved recently since the, the project kicked off. Certainly. And I don't think there's any better sales pitch and value proposition than being able to save lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second one was the uh, the, the uh, finding a car park solution. The yeah. uh, I think it was quoted as the search engine for car parks. <laughs> I mean, these are a couple of example exactly. use cases, but there must yeah. be a plethora of others that you've got well, there out are. there. Yeah. I mean, parking is an interesting one because nobody really likes to park. I mean, that's what we've seen. Uh, and this is also helps people understand really what the Internet of Things is. Mm -hmm. right? When we talk about this digital and digital transformation, we have to make it tangible for people. And yeah. here at Bosch Connected World, people can come and see these solutions like you saw, see how they work, and then the the advantage that they have for them to help either take stress out of their lives, make, yep. increase the quality of their lives, or even save their lives, mm -hmm. right? We just wrapped up with the last keynote and we're talking about some of these social impact things in the Internet of Things with the, the person that's now with the a medic, uh, emergency transport here yep. in, in Europe. You know, he's talking about saving tens of thousands of lives. So that's something that's really exciting when we think about the IoT. Yeah, there's, uh, and I think you referenced it uh, earlier on uh, with, with just the reduction of time to respond, the reduction of time to get them to a point of them. Certainly, of he's recovering. cutting that in half. So, yeah. I mean, the average time he said was nine uh, minutes here in Germany. He can, he can cut that in half and also bring more people. So some of these voluntary, mm -hmm. the volunteers that he has, you know, people with medical experience and understand what to do in these types of situations can respond immediately and be on scene and minutes our lives. 
Yeah, it is indeed. One of the other things that really jumped out at me was the, that you had a number of organisations here as part, as part of the ecosystem and the, and, and the network around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in some cases, we would normally see them or consider them as competitors, Certainly. and yet they're talking about co-opting and co-competing in a friendly way, and that seems to be something you've enabled and made possible. Um, what could you tell us about how that's come about in the first place and, and where do you see that going? I guess the speed and the depth and breadth and scale of some of the solutions that are being built now, it isn't one company that can provide it all. You've got to build this ecosystem and that you're building and build the capability with partners to add value at model parts of the stack, right? Yep. No, we recognize early on that no one can do it alone. Uh, regarding any use cases that you think about out there, you need, you need certain partners. Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of cases, we can bring that domain knowledge, uh, you know, in case of mobility. Um, but in other things like we're seeing in building technology, you know, we have a strong base of sensors and can you know, connect those with software and look at some services, but we also need partners because you know, we're not in the daily business of building buildings, yeah, for example. Yeah. But we can help make those buildings smarter and then actually creating the digital twin that helps in the life cycle of the entire building. So everything from the design, the build, the use, and then even the reuse or later you know, buildings stay yeah. around for yeah. a long time, they tend to. Like the building we're in, you know, this was the old train station. Indeed. So it's interesting to have a uh, connected world in probably what one of maybe Berlin's most unconnected buildings. Indeed, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's coming to life, it's fascinating to see. So the partnerships are, are very important, and as you mentioned too, it's not just partners, you know, that you saw competitors out there on, the, on the show yeah. floor. But and I mean, we're, happening to, we're having to find ways to work together with them uh, to create and bring some of these solutions to life. The thing that really struck me as well is they were excited to be here together. Uh, you know, and, and that doesn't happen often. I do like the reference to this building and that uh, the, the digital transformation that's come about as a result of Bosch Connected World being here for a number of years is just mind-boggling that yeah. such an old building and a long state place that's been in very hands-on tactile industrial, hammers on steel, now it's all digital and connected. I yeah. love that, friends. No, it's a wonderful setting. Next 12 to 18 months. So the events sort of packing up, as people can probably hear in the background. Um, uh, we've had an exciting couple of days, but you know, when everyone goes home, catches their breath, uh, tries to figure out sort of where to go next. Uh, next 12 to 18 months is going to be a very exciting time. There's mm -hmm. some big things coming out of yourself and your team in North America yep. and Bosch globally. Um, any thoughts and insights you could sort of share with uh, our audience uh, yeah. uh, from sort of boardroom down? Because I think one of the things that I'm seeing now is people are trying to work out what kind of items should we put on our boardroom agendas that are fixed points that we just keep talking about to try and get this vocab and language going yeah. because there's so many moving parts they don't know where to start. I think a big part of what we take away here is again bringing people together in this network that's created. Mm -hmm. So when I uh, myself walking around you know meeting new individuals we actually brought some new partners here with us and creating these relationships and, and taking away some of the fear of the IoT, right? right? I think that's the biggest part of the digital transformation at least what we're seeing in North America it's also culturally a big change for right. us, and it's a big mindset change. You know, we're a 130-year-old product-based mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. now talking about going digital, and uh, that can be scary for some, fascinating for others, but we all have to move these people along, right? Really going from this entrepreneurial side of the house. I mean, if we yeah. looked at the last two days, mm -hmm. you see the passion for innovation, the entrepreneurship, but, you know, Monday we'll be back in our operational world. So how do we create that adaptive space yeah. to continue to yeah. move these ideas through? That's the exciting part. The thing that really jumps out at me from what you're saying there is that, you know, in many ways, Bosch is leading the way in, in so many ways, but cultural and behavioral shift in an organization when your CEO sort of turned around and said, we didn't send out a memo, as it were, <laughs> and I'm paraphrasing him, to say, stop wearing tires and relax a bit. Yeah. We just did it and the culture shifted with it. I think there's no better way than to lead by example, right? Yeah. And, and if you look at all of your partners and your clients and the industry as a whole, they will definitely be sitting up and paying attention for what they've seen the last couple of days. Certainly. And particularly that uh, even, I, I forget the, the, the fellow's name, but the, the second speaker who turned up uh, with the energy company, and he said, I turned up in a tie, I took it <laughs> off. Um, and these are, these are neat changes because yeah. they're, they're fun and, and they, they help us change the behavior and culture that we, I think we need at the business side, Certainly. Uh, as well as the technology. Mm -hmm. Well, Mike, it's been absolutely fantastic to catch up with you. Great to see you and thanks yeah, for making time to, uh, to speak with me. We look forward to a really exciting next couple of years from you and your team, thank uh, you. both in North America and Bosch as a, a whole globally. I appreciate you covering the story. Absolutely. So, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having thanks us Thanks very here. much. Thank you. Talk to you later.